software design patterns are really cool in theory, but in practice, they can add a lot of complications. And that's exactly what happens when services communicate via messaging. I have four years working with microservices, and in this video, I'll show you three ways messaging can go wrong and how to get around those issues. This video is part of a 10 episode series on microservices communication, but the concepts we'll discuss here are applicable to any software that uses messaging. Here is the first way messaging can go wrong. Let's take a video service that publishes messages when a video is uploaded, updated, or deleted, and a transcript service that listens to those messages to create, update, and delete transcripts. So far, so good, but it's fairly common to have multiple instances of the same service running. If you have three instances of the transcript service, all of them will be listening to the same message channel and processing messages as they arrive. So the first instance picks up the message to generate the transcript. The second instance could pick up the message to update the transcript. And the third one picks up the message to delete the transcript. So do you see what could go wrong with this setup? So what happens if the first instance hasn't finished processing the message to generate the transcript and the second instance picks up the message to update the transcript? So the second instance will try to update a transcript that doesn't exist yet. And the same thing for the third instance, it will try to delete a transcript that doesn't exist. So how can you make sure that the messages are processed in the correct order when there are multiple instances receiving messages? To ensure messages are processed in the correct order, we can assign all messages related to a specific video to a single instance. This way, one instance handles all operations, so the create, update, and delete for that video, and that maintains the correct sequence order. But how do we implement this in a distributed system with multiple instances? The solution is sharded channels. So think of sharded channels like lanes on the highway, and each lane is assigned to a specific type of vehicles. So here is how it works. The main message channel is split into multiple sub-channels, and that's the shards. And each shard is assigned to a specific consumer instance, and messages are routed to a shard based on the video ID. For example, the shard one could handle videos with IDs starting with 0, 1, 2, or 3. The second shard could handle videos from 4 to 6, and the third one, videos with IDs starting from 7 to 9. This setup ensures that all messages for a given video are processed by the same instance and the messages are processed in the correct order. Sharded channels are also very useful to distribute the workload evenly. So when you need more resources, you can add more shards and more instances. And when you need to scale down, you can reduce them, just like adding or removing lanes on the highway. But what if one of the instances crashes and stops acknowledging messages? In our case, we could just say that the transcription is not a critical feature of the platform. And if messages are not acknowledged, they are lost forever and that's the end of the story. Or we could say that we care about the transcripts and it's only fair that if someone bothers to create an amazing video and provide viewers with really useful content, we have to create the transcript. So how can you make sure that the messages do not get lost and every video gets its transcript. To prevent lost messages, we can use a message broker that supports guaranteed delivery. This feature ensures that messages are retried until they are successfully acknowledged by the consumers. So let me show you how this works. If the transcript service goes down and fails to acknowledge the message, the message broker will hold on to those messages and keep retrying to send them. While it's doing this, new incoming messages are buffered, and when the service comes back online and acknowledges the retried messages, the broker then sends the buffered messages in order. Some brokers can persist all the published messages, and subscribers can decide to consume those messages from a specific point in time. And this opens up possibilities like replaying all the events and implementing event sourcing patterns. An example of such brokers include Apache Kafka and RabbitMQ. There are multiple ways a service can fail to acknowledge a message. For example, the service could crash just before sending the acknowledgement, or there could be a network failure that prevents the message from being acknowledged. 
So what happens if the transcript service consumes the video created message, successfully creates the transcript, but then fails to acknowledge the message back? In this case, the message broker assumes that the message wasn't processed and retries sending it. The transcript service will receive the same message again and may attempt to create the transcript once more. And this can lead to duplicate transcript being created, wasted resources due to redundant processing, and potential inconsistencies in your system. So how can we make sure that we don't create duplicate transcripts? Or overall, how can we make sure that we don't process the same message multiple times? To handle duplicate messages, we need to make our message processing idempotent. That's just a fancy term that means processing the same message multiple times will have the same effect as processing it only once. It's like pressing a button on an elevator, whether you press it once or multiple times, the elevator only responds once. So here is how you can achieve this. In the case of creating a transcript, we could simply check if there is already a transcript for the video. And if there is, we can just ignore the message. And basically the message handler can be called multiple times, but it won't have any side effect after the first call. But it's not always easy to implement an idempotent handler. So let's say that we want to count the number of updates to a transcript. This means that we need to make sure that we don't increase the counter if we receive the same message, especially if you are billing your customers based on the number of transcript updates. So you don't want to mess that up. So another option is to use a unique identifier. Each message can have a unique ID and the service can keep track of the messages that have already been processed. This way, the service can process only new messages and ignore every message that has already been processed. So by making our handlers idempotent, we ensure that even if messages are sent multiple times, they are only processed once and our system remains consistent. Asynchronous messaging is very powerful, but it comes with its own set of challenges and complexities. But what if there was a simple way, a method where you don't have to worry about message order, lost messages or duplicates, but still achieve asynchronous communication. So watch the next video to discover this alternative solution.